Oh hi, it's Bukai, and welcome back to another video guide for Eidolon, and today I'm going to be showcasing a mining guide, and we're going to be starting off with the post office. Now inside of the post office, it's fairly basic. You start off with your mining up to 200. 200 is where your diminishing returns are. Once you hit that, bring up your health box up to 200. If you still have boxes left over, go over towards your drop box and invest into that. Once all three of them are up to 200, then I would say invest evenly up to 400 on those boxes. Now, looking at the cards, I'm a big proponent of investing into the crab cakes. I know that people still argue with me tooth and nail on there. I will defend this to the day I die. Food is a huge increase. It doesn't show on your paper. But other than that, I use my iron ore and my gold ore and my plat card and my dementia card on there to give me my mining speed, AFK gains, and my efficiency on my mining. From there, I actually want to go for more card drop considering I'm in a card farming frenzy. So I've got 32% card drop chance on my Sir Stash. And I have my Amarok card giving me my skill AFK gain. And I have my King Dude for more drop rate. You can replace those cards for instead of having drop rate for more strength in order to gain more mining efficiency. It is totally up to you, but I still prefer taking in these cards that I currently have. Looking at the obols, it's fairly simple on there. Equip whatever square obols you have. I'm out of them, but your priority is your silver obol of moderate mining. If you are capped out on that or you just don't have enough, then equip your silver strength obols. Those guys are also really, really good to equip. And that's essentially obols. Like I said, I do not have any square, spare square obols to be tossing down to my miners. I hope to get some eventually. Now looking into the alchemy tab on there, you really want to be focusing on the orange tab here. And underneath the orange tab, you want to be starting off investing into your hardy digger. This increases your mining efficiency for every power of 10 hit points that you have which is why you want to be staying around the 1,000 point on there. Now, that's a log algorithm, not a breakpoint, but there is diminishing returns after 1,000. Into the Roid Raging as well, because considering strength gives you more mining efficiency, and I am burning through a lot of my logs on there. I was saving up to get 10 mil, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Warrior's Rule multiplies all of these warrior, all of the orange cauldron up by whatever the level is, Wyoming blood is absolutely needed to mine some of the higher end ores. You cannot neglect it. From there, investing into your really smart helps out with gaining more levels. It helps you get levels faster. That's about it. Your strong tools are a important investment because considering you get more skilling power. Again, absolutely necessary to hit some of the higher ores. Now, other than that, I assume there's going to be more looking up the line on the actual alchemy but i haven't yet explored too deep into the orange cauldron but you want to be investing into drop and loads to increase your drop rate more drop means more statues and more cards it's just better altogether to improve your miner looking at the star talents what you want to be looking at is getting your dwarfed beardus on there and if you have leveled it all the way up into getting your devil star sign make sure that you equip that I've been lazy with star signs. I really haven't been paying attention to them, but I highly recommend you go through them. From there, equip your miner's pants and your good old-fashioned cavern trekkers. Those are just so important for your mining efficiency, especially for the higher ores. You need to have those. Equip all the highest tools that you can on your guy on there. Make sure that you have a minimum of level 8 in all the skills, so you can at least equip the tool number 1, and equip some stat stick items onto them and equip your highest level pickaxe that you can use. So with that, I'm sitting at 10.2 mining efficiency with just my gear and my cards, no stats, which gets me a round, I'm close to one, two of the three times, but I'm not exactly there yet. The other thing that you want to be equipping is your decent life potions to make sure that you go over the thousand break points. I say break point, but it's a log algorithm and equip your golden peanuts on there. The golden peanuts are often underestimated as they give you mining efficiency. And if I go over and look at it, it's about 900 mining efficiency that I'm getting just from those golden peanuts. Like that gets huge the more that you can stack. And I'm going to have to go back and actually invest into getting more mining uh, tools to have because I do have a ton of golden peanuts. 
I think I have like 700 in my bank. Now looking at food, you want to be equipping your icing iron brights. Uh, the reason for this is because they're just so good. They may not increase your paper efficiency, so they're not going to help you get to the next ore, but they will help if you are at 100% of an ore, they increase your, your actual mining chance and your gains on your ore. It doesn't appear on the paper as nicely, but they do, as you can see there, increase it by a decent chunk. And with your crab cake card, you're not eating them that often. It is very important to equip those, and I will defend to the death the right to use them. I know so many people still argue with me that no, don't use it, it's worthless. No, it's not. 10% mine, if it was worthless, use the poopy pickaxe. It's the highest mining efficiency on there, air for the mining power that you get. Oh, but nobody wants to use it because it's slow. And that's the biggest thing on there. It is slow. So you use that to increase your speed. Now, to get into the actual build, dump 100 points into your back to basics and 100 points into your strength some more. From there, I invest into my statues, but then I put about 5 points into the obols. That's a bit 5 points too many. I would put 1 tops into there and then dump the rest into your good old-fashioned statues. Once you've maxed out the statues and your obols, you can start to kind of turn yourself into a hybrid fisher. You're not going to be as efficient, but you don't really have anywhere else to drop your point. Now into the warrior tab, it's important to note how many points that you actually have. So I got 411 points to spend here. And within this 411, you really want to be maxing your big pick immediately. Big pick is just that good of a skill on there that it needs to be boosted up to the top. Make sure you equip it, because I know a lot of people have put into Big Pick and just haven't equipped it on there, and, well, you kind of need to. From there, you've got the choice into upgrading your strength or upgrading your tool proficiency. If you don't have the points, I say upgrade them evenly. If you do, max out your strength and then max out your tool proficiency. I did it the opposite here, considering I can afford both, but you firmly grasp it over your base strength because you gain an additional 15 strength doing so. Make sure you put it on your bar and activate it. If you fail to do so, you do not gain its benefits. Now, you want to be investing 100 points into the Copper Collector. The Copper Collector is a huge bonus. So I'm sitting at 1.73 million Copper and I've got 73.3% bonus. That is a huge chunk and I need to get that Copper up to around 10 mil. Simply be considering it is needed to hit the higher ores. You absolutely, absolutely need it. And then any excess goes into the mother load miner. And if you still have excess points, you invest into the temptress emotions on there. If you still have points, you can invest into the absolute unit for more strength. Now into the base tab, what you want to be looking at is first upgrading your brute efficiency straight to 100. After that, invest into your Fists of Rage up to the maximum that you can, which it should be 200 if you invest into the Barbarian tab. From there, Air, you're going to be wanting to upgrade your good old-fashioned skilling on there. So bring that up to around 50. Uh, I bring it to 100, which I actually think is a mistake. I probably should have only brought it up to around 50 and then boosted my HP up to 100 instead i think that would have been a better option but you know live and learn live and learn it's not the biggest deal not the biggest deal into your star talent points make sure that you invest into the tiktok as many points as you can and ignore the xp exp converter it is a noob trap it is awful do not use it i know that there's some people at the very very high levels that say that it starts becoming useful it might uh i still call it completely useless do not invest into it you're better off just skilling xp is harder to get than the actual class xp invest your highest amount of points and i like to keep a buffer into your two skills that give you extra points and then i invest my maximum into my frothy milk and then the rest of just exp for my good old-fashioned class experience as class experience is the lifeblood of any type of skilling now looking at this, we're going to be showing what this build is capable of on my character and as you can see it's getting just shy of 5 times on copper per swing, which is really, really nice. And I don't even have my strength some more really activated. It's activate, but that's from before. And you can see it there. I'm up to 13,000 ores an hour. Now, if people are interested in this bridge on there, I might make a little guide on how to actually get it. It's not that hard. You just follow Krunk's quests and he unlocks it, but I can make a full-on guide for people if they wish. Underneath my gold, I'm getting 3,374 per hour. 
and this is now where my firmly grasp it has worn off and I've yet to reactivate it. So a lot of these ores are lower than what they should be. Now going down to the iron, I am sitting at 6,749 per hour, just shy of three times per click. And you'll notice that I'm not using any prayers either, considering I haven't really been delving into the prayers that much, and I'm sure there are prayers that can help out. So going down to platinum ore, this guy is, oh wow, I did not expect to knock that thing down. Uh, I'm sitting at 2,466 plat ore, and I'm almost at 100% accuracy for it. So that means that this build's going to probably be just shy of void. And we'll just need a ton more copper ore to actually reach void ore. Now looking over towards dementia, you can see that I am just past the 5% on there. I'm sitting at 12 and I'm getting 405 ores per hour. A decent chunk, but it does mean that void will be probably a void in my heart left behind. I love those puns. I'll see myself out though. Now if I do want void ore, I can get it. I can use the actual big pick but it's not actually right at that level on there. So if I go down to my AFK gain, it is 0%. I am not at the 5% minimum to activate it. I'm at 82K out of 150K requirement. So I've got quite a bit to go on there. This is a build that's capable of mining a ton of dementia ore, and all it needs is a lot of copper ore to hit the void and whatnot. And with that, that is the mining build for everyone. If you guys have enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to give it a like, a subscribe, pass it on to your friends. If you hated it, pass it on to your enemies, then add a spite. And if you would like to help support the channel, there's a coffee shop in the link below where you can buy me a coffee. It'd be much appreciated. And if you guys would like to join our wonderful community, there's a Discord link down there too. So with that, take care, everyone.